Okay, I want to have a little look at this book which I was reading last night in uh, prayer. It's weighty, it's intellectual. The first time I read it, I thought, no, it's too wordy for what I'm after. It's tough going, even for somebody with theological training, but it's very, very juicy. Exploring in deep detail um, the nature of the Greek East and the Latin West, okay, from the earliest times. Um, I'm only going to focus on one aspect. Uh, which is the this section here, from theology to philosophy in the Latin West. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm an ex-monk. I was seven years in religious life as a Catholic um, in various orders, mainly in, in a group called Lumen Dei, which in, were in Spain and Latin America, um, very much given to contemplation as well as mission, serving the poorest of the poor, great believers in prayer, contemplation, this, the striving, the ascetical and mystical striving for union with God. However, I'm now Orthodox. It took me a long time to get there. And I visit frequently Orthodox monasteries, plan to go to Mount Athos soon for however long God permits. And um, I can see the, the great difference between the way Orthodox monks are trained and live and the way that we did as, as Roman Catholics. Um, quite substantially different. I mean, yes, we prayed, they prayed, we prayed lots, they pray lots. We were always in the church, they're always in the church. We worked hard all through the year, they work hard. But there's fundamental differences which I was given to understand from the minute I walked in to an Orthodox monastery. After I'd already left religious life, I was no longer a Catholic monk. I went into an Orthodox monastery and my life changed forever. I encountered, it's like the lights went on. And I saw it as the fulfillment of all of my previous strivings. Praise God. We'll get to this book in just a minute. But the difference, I've just recently been at an Orthodox monastery again, the one in Essex in England, and um, such a beautiful time, such beautiful people. And it's really got me thinking, wow, this, the, the way the young novices are being trained is so different from the way we were trained. Humility is emphasized. For us, military-style obedience was emphasized. We always had a book in our hands. I mean, yes, we worked hard on the land, etc. But we were, all, we were very studious reading types. I don't think I've ever seen many of them with books in their hands. A few of the priests, you know, that are quite scholarly, but they're not bookish people. They, they do love their books, but there's a different emphasis. The liturgy. We approach it with our heart in orthodoxy. Prayer, we approach it with our heart, with a still mind in the heart. As a Catholic, we approached prayer with the head, filling the head with ideas first, in order to warm up what we thought of as the will, in order to emotionally and devotionally unite ourselves with God through the heated head in order to heat what we thought was the heart. Well, the first thing I'm really, if we get back to the book now, um, the first thing I would like to say about this is that the, the, the author says in this chapter, he says the, the, the thing that's been lost in the West is the heart. I mean, the heart's mentioned in the West more so now since the 1800s, the 1900s, the, um, with pietism and whatnot, the, the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary, but it's still very, it's very different from what the Orthodox understand as the heart, as the unite, the center of our being, as the united cent. The aim is to unite the noose, which isn't the rational mind. I don't, and the author's going to say that the idea of the noose was also lost. 
So the noose and the heart are lost in Western theology. The noose is the experiential, intuitive aspect of the mind, not the rational discursive. That's what Augustine and later Aquinas will major on. It's all about discursive. It's all about the rational mind. He talks at length about how Augustine develops Augustine, but takes it in a different direction with the understanding that the only knowledge that we can have when we're born, rasa tabula, uh, empty slate, the only knowledge that we can have is from the creatures, from, from the senses. So everything that we know is derived from our senses and then by a process of abstraction. In the rational soul, we abstract to come to higher ideas. And these higher ideas are not God. Our thoughts of God are not God. Aquinas realizes that. But all we can have as creatures, he will say, it's not God. But um, analogies of God, analogous thinking is all we can have. And therefore, hence the, the absolute dependence of Roman Catholicism and Western theology, consequently, on ideas, 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 words, words, words. Systems of thought. The close that if you want to get close to God, go and get a PhD from Oxford or Cambridge. Go and get an A level in the subject. And this is very far from the thinking of me, you know, the desert fathers, the church fathers, which orthodoxy has stayed much closer to. Because of this, my monastic life, as I say, <laughs> I just always had a book in my hand. Um, when I wasn't working on the land um, and I wasn't even in prayer, we were allowed to take books in and the, we were told kind of, and this was coming to the Siglo Adoro, the 16th century in Spain. I was in Spain and it was very much, you know, you pray discursively with books, Lexio Divina, until such a time as you simply can't do that anymore and God infuses supernaturally this contemplation into our being. And of course, it just didn't really happen that often. So we remained with books. And we, what we would do is read a page, stop, think about it, ruminate over it, and then try and create some devotional feeling about this and say a few prayers to God. And there's power in all of that. But the Orthodox way is so much sweeter and more direct. It is to stand with the mind in the heart here, St. Theophan puts it nicely, forgive the, the crappy light, but uh, I take off the flash. And you probably can't see it at all. The principal thing is to stand with the mind in the heart before God and to go on standing before him unceasingly both day and night. That is orthodoxy. That's what's going on in the liturgy and in the prayers in the great jesus prayer to stand with the naked mind stilled mind before god in the heart the unified heart of our being praying that jesus prayer the greeks simply call it the prayer lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner or its equivalents and thus, because our thoughts, as Aquinas rightly said, they can't take us to God. God is not our thoughts. Aquinas gets all into the rational proofs for the existence of God and whatnot. This is not God. God does not need to be subjected to our proofs. God is to be experienced in the childlike noose unless you become like little children you will not enter the kingdom of god as you still all that chattering intellective dispersion unless you quieten those passions and you won't do it with a phd so many phds are still wretches it won't still still the passions the quieted mind in the heart center of our being this is orthodox spirituality this is the way of the great ancient church it's the church of the desert fathers 
I think I'll make a second uh, video because this is getting rather long.